a fast on how to tower dive. You just killed Soraka. This is good. Good job. Now you can tell with Draven's body language that he wants to that he wants to dive this Kogma. So what I would suggest for you to do is you don't even need your hook, honestly, like your Draven is so fed. Walk up this way, punch him in the air, and just stand right here. That way, when the tower is shooting at you, right, the moment that this guy dies, the moment this guy dies, you can just walk, walk out. And essentially, your Draven can do a ton of damage without having to blow heal. And if he needs to heal you, he'll be with you to walk out. It takes a little getting used to tower diving, but once you get used to it, it's really easy and it snowballs your lane super hard. Especially with the way that the game is right now, it's super snowball dependent. Okay, so let's see what you could be doing right now. I noticed that you do have a lot of idle time, so... <clears throat> you notice that mid lane right now is getting shit on by Zed and Shivana. That means nobody can be bottom. Their Kogma and Soraka are coming from base. So right now you have two choices. One choice is to get vision in their jungle over here and over here by the red or you can hit this turret right here with Draven. Right? The next wave is coming in. You kill that real quick. You have two target stacks. That's free, that's free gold for you, and you're able to get this tower pretty easily, I would say. That way you're trading for mid. First tower gold is really nice. You want to hold your target stacks for, for melees and cannons if you can help it. But definitely you shouldn't be using so much idle time, like just walking around like the way you are right now. Oh, that was a nice try. Trying to predict a dodge there. I respect it. Ooh, that's a fed ass Zed. Okay, nice. Draven disengaged it. You guys should be fine. Alright, let's see your purchase. So you're looking at Zeke's. What I recommend you to do, grab those Moby Boots. That is essential to Blitzcrank builds. Moby Boots allows you to get around the map faster. And the biggest strength of Blitzcrank is the fact that he can get to a place faster than others with his W. You want to make use of that. Roaming is probably the best thing that you can do as a support unless there are specific instances where you don't go Mobis, just because you either go Lucidity Boost or Soak Shoes. Usually poke champions, you want more damage. So the way that I would recommend you is every time you base, every time you base, you buy two pinks, at least two pinks, unless it's your first buy. And then you want to make your way down mid. Because from mid, you can decide where you're going to go to next. Okay, bottom tower is dead. Tell your jungler, let's make a play for dragon. And once dragon is dead, you push out bottom wave with your AD carry. Now, why you do this is because dragon gives you free stats. You've won bottom, you got the turret, so there's nothing for you to get there anymore. 
your team is getting shit on. So what you need to do is help them by giving them tower gold. How you do this is you prep the wave bottom to push to the enemy team. Their bot lane won't be able to react because it is low elo. Once you push out bottom, you want to tell Draven, okay, let's go top and let's play for this top first tier turret and herald. So you want to think of it very systematically what you want to do. You grab the objective that's near you first, which is dragon and first tier bottom turret. Then you switch it. You go to top side and you force down the first tier turret and herald. This is how you snowball games and how things get out of control really fast for your team because you, it is a very snowball type of game. Getting wards for your mid laner is way more important than getting wards for your bot lane. Everybody knows that mid laners, like especially in lower elos, get shit on by jungle 24-7 because they don't know how to play the game properly and they don't ward for themselves. So it's your job for support to make sure your idiot mid laner doesn't hard in their Z in this case. So you want to the best places to ward for your mid. You want to try and get a pink in this bush right here and a green ward here. You usually want a layer of green vision, which is the invisible wards from your side stone or your trinket first so that you like they're most likely not going to sweep that and you'll be able to see them walk into your vision towards your pinks. Now pinks is guaranteed they don't have vision in those bushes or areas. So you can defend those. If you see enemies trying to clear that shit, you ping them and you can get the jump on them a lot of the time. So if you're pinking for mid, the best places to pink, I'm going to show you right now. You want to pink here. If it's too dangerous to walk that far, you pink here or you pink here. And if you're feeling cheeky, like you want to gank mid because you see an opportunity, you want to pink your path. So most likely the enemy does not have a uh, root. So you can walk down this way and then you can pink the other island bush and the line brush that's beside the mid lane. So essentially that is like the best places for you to pink for your mid laner or get a green ward for them. I can recommend to you guys watching this right now that the best times to ward for your mid is when you base so you go straight to mid lane and you ward for them. Even if you can't gank, you at least ward for them. Because there's so many players who play mid who fucking suck and don't ward for themselves and will literally lose you the game because they don't fucking ward and the jungler shits on them and then they'll blame you for not helping them and shit or blame the jungle. So just assume your team is a bunch of idiots that don't know how to play the game and all you gotta do is that one ward will save you the game a good amount of times ooh let's see you solo this guy ooh damn he got saved by Soraka ult unlucky you're doing pretty spot on with your hooks though not bad I'm sure once you get used to roaming and vision you will be able to 100% carry games with Blitzcrank because your skill shots are there. It's just that your vision control is not there. Always be thinking ahead what you're going to be doing next. Okay, Draven needs to catch this wave. I'm going to help him catch this wave. Look for your next objective. We need that dragon. No game knowledge. I mean, I can understand that you just started this game not too long ago, right? So I wouldn't sweat it. The best thing that you can do to improve your game knowledge of the game is... Nice. That was great, Peel. The best thing that you can do to improve your game knowledge for any of you guys watching is to find your favorite high elo streamer and you just copy how they play, what they play, and their decision making. A lot of streamers tend to say what their decision making is whenever they're you know looking to roam, looking to force a one-on-one -on -one or team fight. 
or what they should be doing next, whether that's split pushing, team fighting, getting vision, stuff like that. That's that's how I got better really fast. I watched the odd one and I was a jungle main at the time and I went from you know being a shitty gold player to ending the season barely platinum when platinum was the only thing there. Well there was diamond too but I wasn't that good yet. Refresh the video. Where are we? 1352? That's a nice difference now. Yeah, so full microwave, we're definitely going to be going over the runes and masteries for you after this game. So don't worry about it too much. I'll be able to help you out there and before you know it, you'll be clean as fuck blitzcrank, dude. Okay, so this is good. Essentially what you guys did here, you should have done this maybe like five, six minutes ago, but you know, we're still learning, so it's all good. Push out the wave, grab the dragon, now we're heading top side, so this is perfect. This is a great lane assignment right now. Okay, your draven is just beast moding this and killing everybody. Not bad. So you want to play around that guy. So this is a... Uh very precarious situation going for that hook on the Shivana. Now he he's he's there, right? Oh shit. Okay, so we see Shivana. I want you to before you look for hooks, this is how you lose games with Blitzcrank is when you hook their carry and there is a disconnect between you and Draven. Draven is shoving the wave, he wants to shove the wave, and you want to protect this pink. But how can you protect this pink if Draven is pushing the wave? So you lose a shit ton of HP for pretty much no reason here. Like he just shits on you super hard, and he chunks you, and you're not able to really trade back. You know what I mean? So. So you pretty much, you pretty much kill your AD here, because you lose your he your your health, like that. Now your team's able to clean up and stuff, but I wouldn't rely on them to be able to like do shit, you know. So next time, when you're looking for hooks and making plays. Just take a quick half second to look who's with you to be able to follow up on that hook. Okay, so again, you can definitely ward for mid right now. <coughs> If you want 100% guaranteed plays and stuff like that, just follow your jungler and gank with him. If you follow your jungle and gank with your jungler, it's actually so nice. Just because you have an extra set of CC, right? Now this was able to work because they basically did a 2v1 twice with Zed jumping in on you, dying to Draven, and then Swain jumping on Draven and dying to Draven. So that was not that that worked out pretty well. You always want to be trying to look for your biggest percentage plays. So it's nice your team is able to do really well here, but if you want to improve as a player, you want to really be critical on what you can be doing to improve your next style of play. Okay, your team is going full monkey mode here, I guess. Just run it down. <laughs> yep, exactly the same phone microwave. Two for one is fine, especially if Draven gets the kills. Totally okay.